Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim. This channel is all about hiking, backpacking, camping, the Camino, and the gear that helps you do all that stuff. You should click subscribe, click that bell so you know when the next video drops. Today I'm going to be looking at the Geigerig 700M Hydration Pack. On a recent hiking trip, I decided to bring my hydration bladder, which is fairly unusual for me, but I decided it would be best on this particular trip. And as I was going along, I started noticing that I seemed to be getting a lot of air in with my water. I was losing suction, and upon inspection, I realized that the tube had cracked, and so it was time to either get a new one or replace the entire system. But while I was shopping around for hydration bladders, I discovered a pack out there that had a new kind of hydration reservoir system that I thought looked kind of cool, and because I found it on a really good deal, it basically ended up costing me the same to get the entire pack and hydration system as it would have to just replace my bladder. And that system is the Geigerig hydration engine. It appears that for a while Geigerig was its own thing and now it's owned by Aquamira. And on the Aquamira side, it seems like they are leaning more toward the tactical versions of these packs. But for bikers, motorcycle riders, fast pack hikers, that kind of thing, maybe even runners, this kind of pack seemed to be fairly popular. Now, in a lot of reviews, all you pretty much hear about is the way the hydration engine that they call it works, and I will go over that, but first I want to go over the pack itself. Like several companies, Geigerig names their packs after the cubic inches in storage that the pack has. This is a 700. 700 cubic inches is pretty close to 12 liters. So this is not a very big bag. Moreover, it comes with a 2 liter hydration engine which, when it is expanded, which I'll explain in a minute, takes up a pretty good portion of the bag. So although this might look fairly good size on camera, it's not gonna carry a lot. Just for comparison's sake, here is my Osprey Talon. It is a 22 liter pack, and here's the Geigerig 12. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I got this out of the package is this is not an ultralight pack. This is a 12 liter backpack that weighs the same as my 22 liter Osprey. It's just under 29 ounces for a pack that really is not terribly big. However, it is extremely durable. The material of this pack is very tough. You've got nice big zippers, a big thick carry handle, and an extremely padded back panel. So there is a lot of creature comfort and durability to this bag, but it is certainly not lightweight. You've got a seam sealed front zipper with a fairly decent sized pouch right here in the front. Molly compatible webbing all across the front of the pack. So if you did feel the need to expand the capabilities of the pack with an extra pocket or something, you have the ability to do that. You've got four compression straps total on the outside, but no side pockets or anything. So you're not really gonna be using these for any kind of storage. The main pocket is basically in two pieces with a front panel that folds down and a main area pocket in the back. The front one, actually zips all the way down to the bottom of the pack, giving you a really nice access to the interior storage. On the flap, you have an all mesh pocket storage system, one that runs about two thirds of the way down, and then another one that gives you another third of the pack at the bottom. And I appreciate this because Mesh pockets like this that don't stretch can be very difficult to get into if you've got stuff all the way at the bottom and you don't want to have to unload everything. The interior has what looks like an admin panel, but the panel itself is actually a pocket that lifts up. So whatever's in here can actually float above the contents of the pack. And you've got standard storage for like three pens and a couple little things in this pocket. There's a key retention hook, and that is it for the inside here. So this is a fairly flat pocket. You're not going to get a whole lot in here. When we go to the main compartment, the zippers don't come down very far. Essentially what this is is just a big pocket for the hydration engine. Somewhat redundantly, in my opinion, is a pouch to hold the hydration bladder. There is room in front of it, but as you will see, once this thing is actually used the way it's supposed to be, you're probably not going to get a whole lot else in here. Maybe like a super thin frog tog jacket or something that can compress down to almost nothing, but I would definitely not plan on getting your lunch in here. You've got nice cushy shoulder straps. There are no load lifters. Along the straps, you have numerous exit points for your hydration hose. So when you're looking on the inside, instead of a hole in the pack like a lot of them have, you basically have access to the straps themselves. 
So you can go into either one, and it can exit at either end. However, it is important to note that because of the way the hydration engine works, you actually have two hoses coming out of the pack. One of them has a bulb at the end of it that you're going to secure with this collar. However, this is removable, so you can put this on either strap, depending on which side you prefer which hose to be on. But that is why that is there, and I'll show you that bulb in a minute and explain what it's for. Below this, you have an adjustable sternum strap, another piece of hose retention, nice adjustable straps with collars on them to keep them from flopping around, and it's got a fairly small little hip belt strap. The hip belt does not have pockets, but it does have some molly webbing on it in case you wanted to add something. The back cushioning is substantial, and it does have some routing for airflow, and that is about it feature-wise. This is a very simple pack, although it looks somewhat complicated. It's really just a bunch of little pockets on the inside. On the outside, it is fairly simple, minus the molly webbing. So the pack itself is kind of an odd combination of minimalist in volume, but kind of maximalist when it comes to administrative type storage. It's got a lot of webbing and strapping on the outside, but most of it really doesn't do very much by itself. And this pack, which is barely 12 liters, runs almost 30 ounces. So what is the point of this thing? Well, the beauty of the Geigerig system is not really so much their packs as their hydration system. So let's get into that now. Geigerig calls their hydration bladder system an engine. And as you can see from all of the pieces, that's a pretty apt description. This is not just a plastic bag with a hose sticking out of it and a bite valve on one end. This is a rather advanced hydration system that is literally designed to not suck. What Geigerig has done is come up with a way to pressurize a hydration bladder such that water actually flows through the hose without any suction on the part of the drinker. Now, this may not seem like that big of a deal, but it does have some advantages. Number one, you don't have as much concern about placement. The bag will pretty much function whether or not the hose is on the bottom or the top or the side. However you decide to store it, the water is going to come out. Second, if you're sharing your water with others and you don't necessarily want everybody sticking the bite valve in their mouth, you can literally just spray the water out like a drinking fountain. And finally, if you're using the water to cool down, you can literally give yourself a spritz while you're on the move. Because unlike traditional hydration systems, which rely on suction to get the water out of the bag and through the hose, the Geigerig system is actually a pump. So let's take a look at how this works. First of all, we have the bag. So this is the two liter hydration bladder that comes with the Geigerig 700. You'll notice that the bag has two colors, and that's because there's actually two compartments to this bag. The clear one has your water, and the blue one has air. So the way you fill the bag is through a system kind of like the Canuck Vecto, where you have a full, wide open mouth that you can just literally drag the bag through the water, and it will fill up very quickly. You then fold it over and attach the top slider, and you have a fully sealed water bag. For the water side, you have a fairly standard bite valve type hose. This is slightly insulated. It is a quick release, so it just snaps right on and off. This comes with a nice little cap, and there's your standard system. However, there's one more hose to attach. This is your pressure valve. It goes on the blue side. Same quick release attachment. This works just like a blood pressure cuff, and as you can see, it actually inflates the blue section or the air section of the bladder. And what this does is it pushes against the water that is in the bag, which will then create pressure inside the hose and give you the ability to shoot water out of this without having any suction. So this whole system feeds into that bag. There is a pressure release valve on the bulb that allows you to squeeze the air back out of the bag and get back to something that is more packable. Now there is quite a bit of space between the bladder and your body when it is loaded into the hydration pocket, but this pack also comes with a hard plastic shield that you can slide in between the bladder and the pack, which will allow the pack to keep its curved shape even if you have the bladder expanded quite a bit. So having that panel forces all of the shape shifting to go into the front of the pack rather than your back. Once you've decided on your configuration, you just pick where you want the tubes to come out, go from the front, and out it will come inside the pack. As for me, I like to have the squeeze bulb on my left 
and the drink hose on the right. And what this allows you to do is repressurize the bag when you need to without having to take the pack off and you can still get your drink as soon as you're ready for it. All right, I hope this video has been informative to you. If it has, would you mind giving it a like? And again, subscribe to the channel if you are into hiking, backpacking, camping, the Camino, and the gear associated with those things. Till next time, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim. Take it easy.